Hello everyone, welcome to AppTPLS Academy for Civil Services. It's a video on PIB monthly compilation and I'll be discussing PIB for the month of February 2023. PIB is an important source when it comes to the preparation of civil services. Be it as prelims or mains, it contributes a lot to your preparation. Now why this session is going to be important? Because in this session, I'll be including some of the important news from the general studies paper perspective. The news that is important for general studies paper 2 will be discussed separately, followed by general studies paper 3. Then some news that is in brief, specifically focusing for prelims point of view, some bilateral agreement and summit, and last would be military exercises and initiative. So everything that has happened for the month of February will be covered in this discussion. So without any further delay, let's get started. And if you're new to our channel, do not forget to subscribe apt plus academy for civil services on youtube if you like this video if you find this video informative and helpful for examination purposes do press a like button and before starting the discussion part those of you who are looking forward for prelims 2023 this is the time to enroll and practice a lot more question we have prelims test series 2023 where we'll be provided with 60 high quality tests and a total of 6,000 plus questions along with the subscriptions of IES Gazetted Magazine, which is a reputed magazine for current affairs that will give you a holistic coverage of your current affairs. For more details, you can refer to the description of this video where I provided a link for registration and this course is available both online and offline mode. We will start the discussion with general studies uh, paper 2 related news that was relevant for the month of February. The first is India Energy Week 2023. Recently, Prime Minister has inaugurated India Energy Week in Bangalore in Karnataka. And this is significant because India has already made commitment in many important forum about its commitment regarding reducing the global greenhouse gas emissions, reductions of coal uses and moving towards the transition energy. So India's energy demand has significantly increased and it's expected to reach 11% of the global demand against 5% currently. So this is a factual information that you can take a note of. At present, the demand is at 5%. This is expected to rise by 11%. Now about the event, which basics ke agar baat kare, the Energy Week was organized with the aim to showcase India's rising progress as an energy transition powerhouse. We have discussed a lot many news about India's potential for energy transitions. And this event provides a platform where the leaders across the traditional and non-traditional energy industries, uske alawe governments, academicians, to discuss the challenges and opportunities and responsibility for the clean energy transition. And the event was attended by more than 30 ministers across the country, across the country and even across the globe. Uh, this was this has seen the participation for many international countries, which has definitely given their insight in building and transition towards the clean energy. Now, there's a national green hydrogen mission, which recently government has come up with. The intent of this mission is to incentivize the commercial productions of greenhouse gases where India is a net exporter of fuel. Ki tira, basically, they are targeting to export the green hydrogen. Now, the missions call for decarbonization of the industries because there are many sectors where coal is used. So, the reductions of the coal uses will be there. Mobility and energy sector uses will be Reductions, uh, reducing the dependence on imported of the fossil fuel and feedstock. Developing indigenous manufacturing capabilities. Creating employment opportunities, it expected that 6 lakh jobs will be created. Right? Developing new technologies such as efficient fuel cells and creations of export opportunities for green hydrogen and its derivatives. Now, India ki kya efforts hai green growth ko leker ki? Prime Minister of India has said the efforts, it has come up with the green growth and energy transition and India's values circular economy as a part of India's lifestyle to reduce, reuse and recycle the part of the culture. The brainchild of Prime Minister as there with the initiative called LIFE, which is Lifestyle for Environment. And the Prime Minister has categorically noted that initiative for recycling plastic bottles to uniform will strengthen the mission of LIFE. 
Now the second news that is cabinet approved vibrant village program. This is called VVP. Very important. There can be a direct question in prelims examination. And even if you're writing in mains, you can use this as an example. Now the union cabinet in February 2023 has approved the center sponsored scheme. This is the vibrant village program. This is CCS program. For the financial year and total outlay is 4,800 crore rupees. Although the number is not important, but if you're able to recall, it's good. Now, this is a program till 2023 and 2026. Now, key outcomes of program the vibrant village program will focus on the mobile and internet connectivity to the area where still we do not have the connectivity, all whether road connections ki baat ki gaye, so that the proper no, the, the, the migrations of an individual should also be stopped and this will also provide an opportunity where the logistic system will improve. Hongi. Drinking water availabilities, round the clock electricity using renewable resources like solar and wind energy, tourism centers, jayenge, multi-purpose centers and mental and health wellness center which is again very important. Right? It will focus on the development of tourist center, multi-purpose center and health and wellness center also. The program will provide beneficial to almost people from 19 districts across 46 border blocks of four states, which include the state of Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh, and Union Territory of Ladakh. Now, aim kya hai vibrant village program ki? The first is to develop a comprehensive development of the village at block level, specifically for the northern borders and improving the quality of life and identifying the problem at the border area. Now, second, it will help to encourage the native locations, where the border areas are, the out migrations are by providing them uh, job security or livelihood options. Now, empowerment of the youth and women through skill development and entrepreneurship is the another aim of the government. Leveraging the tourism potential with the promotions of local culture and traditional knowledge and heritage and development for sustainable eco business and the concept of one village one product through community based organizations cooperative self help group and ngos so even the part of non governmental organization or jo ssgs hain self help group hain wo bhi isme help karenge apni participation mein jahan pe one village or one product ko zyada promote ki the Pradhan Mantri PVTG mission, something again important for the vulnerable section of the society for the tribal population. Now, the Union Finance Ministry has announced the missions for welfare, particularly for the vulnerable tribal group uh, for 2023 and 24 in the Union budget. And what is the aim of this mission? The PVTG Kerbatkari, PVTG's development mission will saturate the part of particular vulnerable tribal group for their safe housing, clean drinking water, education, nutrition, road and telecom, connectivity and livelihood, right? There's an old saying that, you know, water, house and clothes are very important. But at present situation in 21st century, two more things has been added. That is education, nutrition and even the telecom connectivity is essential part of the lifestyle. The Pradhan Mantri PVTG missions will be launched as a part of recycling the last mile, one of the seven sub priorities of the union budget. There were seven priorities which was unveiled in the union budget. The 75 PVTG groups in India will be benefited from this scheme. This is the scheme for the central government. This is by the government of India. Now, there's a specific scheme which is there by the state government also, in that context, I would like to inform you about the initiative by Odisha government. So Odisha government has poses an experience in handling this program for the PVTG community and over 75% program uh, which is there in India is usme 13 SA programs jo hai, wo Odisha government. Mein hi ke ja rahe. They have implemented micro project to address the basic need and behavioral change of the PVTG community. And at present, there are 20 micro projects focusing on the development of this group. And Odisha has become the beneficiaries for conservation thumb development scheme, which is a union ministry of tribal affairs, which allocates 100% of the financial assistance to the state government having PVTG communities. So there can be a questions in the prelims examination about 
the total support the central government provide to the state government. Now, center to borrow to boost health infrastructure, something very important. We have seen that during COVID-19 pandemic, the system was completely collapsed. Now, in this context, the government of India is you know, endeavoring towards building a holistic healthcare infrastructure. And this is the long term strategy of the government. The Minister of Health has informed the Parliament that the Union Government has signed a loan agreement to borrow and strengthen the health infrastructure from international agencies. Now, talk about loan for PM Abhi. That is, the World Bank has provided a loan of one billion. This will be this will be provided by the International Bank of Reconstruction Development, which is a wing and arm which provide for the loan to the World Bank. And this will be specifically for the Pradhan Mantri Ayush Bharat Infrastructure Mission, right? And IR, IBRD, that is Indian Bank for Reconstruction and Development, is the lending arm of World Bank. The so World Bank is the lending arm, hai, that is IBRD. World Bank directly lends. This is a vertical which is operating on behalf of World Bank. The loan agreement has been signed to augment the PMRB, which will be launched in, which was actually launched in October 2021. And this is an outlay for 64,180 crore rupees to strengthen the healthcare infrastructure across the country. Now, financial assistance ke baat kare, states ke liye bhi provisions rakhi gai hai. Uh, there will be assistance that will be given to the states to build their healthcare infrastructure under the National Health Mission and PM Abhim that was launched. It was launched with to fill the gaps of the healthcare infrastructure specifically in critical and primary healthcare facilities across the country. Now, something brief about Ayushman Bharat Health Infrastructure Mission. It aims to strengthen the critical healthcare infrastructure in the country at several level, be it its village level, block level for the next five years. So this will be working at the pyramid hierarchy where bottom up approach is essential. So block level selekarke, then village block and again, panchayat level, then district level will be the part of development that will take place. The scheme will provide for the boost citizen in healthcare infrastructure, which citizen ki zarurat hai access to healthcare ki, usko bhaane ki koshish ki gai, and even providing primary and critical healthcare services to both rural as well as urban areas in the country. Now, if you see the core focus of this mission, it has focus on three important priorities. The first among them is augmenting the healthcare facilities. So how it will help in improving the healthcare facilities by providing high class testing network, which is definitely very important considering the fact that without diagnostic process, there cannot be a proper prescriptions of the medicines, right? So effective diagnostic and monitoring of the disease is essential. In that context, the government is looking forward for the healthcare facilities and treatment. In addition, there will be five regional centers banai jayenge. 20 metropolitan cities mein with 15 biosafety labs to further strengthen the testing network. Now, second is establishing the public healthcare lab for diagnostics and diseases. So it aims to support the healthcare and wellness system in the country to ensure effective and timely treatment. The center will have the facilities for early detections of the diseases that will offer for medical consultations, tests and medicines. In addition to this, the government plan to set up 3,000, 35,000 actually new critical pets in 600 districts across the country and provide uh, basically to the seriously ill patient and patient who are in the dire need of the pets. Now, the third is expanding the existence research institutions and study pandemics. So pandemics ke study karne ke liye research institutions banai jayenge, which is again very important that the government has focuses upon because the mission will call for building a capabilities to conduct comprehensive research and studies on pandemics. So a lesson need to be learned that we have lost a lot more human life. There was a collapse of the complete system. So this study will give you a, give us a brief idea that how are the future precautions that need to be taken. At national level, the government plans to establish one nation institute and one health at four national institute of virology among them. Uh, the NIV Pune is the top institution. Now, some news that is related to gender studies paper three and relevant for your examination. The first is G20 discussions on regulating the crypto assets. 
the union finance minister said that india will be discussing with the g20 members about the sops to so, sop ki baat ki gayi hai for the crypto asset right so this is something very important india is having a g20 presidency at this time and india want to set a president in working towards various dimension and sectors to explore the potential and even to regulate the sectors now india's crypto asset industries ki baat kare although before i began the discussion uh, rbi ne categorically yahan keh diya hai that they are not recognizing the part of crypto right so india's crypto asset industries had witnessed a exponential growth over the last 5 years and country has reported 15 million crypto assets holders with a total value of ina 6.6 billion in crypto holding and india has two crypto unicorns right and over 350 crypto startup that is flourishing in the country now roadmap to eradicate leprosy in india something important because uh, there is a roadmap government definitely is looking forward to overcome the problem now despite being declared eliminations of uh, leprosy in 2005 the country still have over 52% of world leprosy patients and leprosy is a chronic bacterial infections that infect the skin nerve lungs and eyes so this is a point to be noted it's a bacterial disease and not viral so there can be a question so you need to eliminate this national strategy plan for and the road map for the leprosy that is for 2023 and 27 the five year plan the government will be looking forward with union health ministries to achieve the zero cases of infection by 2030 and leprosy mukt bharat ke liye government ne 2027 ke target ko set kiya hai which is aligned to the sustainable development goal jo sdg ke targets hain उन अप्रोच और उन पैरामीटर्स पे ही प्रोग्राम्स पॉलिसीज बनाएंगे नाउ देयर इज अ ग्रेट टू डिसेबिलिटीज व्हिच इज देयर इन लेप्रोसी सो द हेल्थ मिनिस्ट्री हैज नोटेड दैट द डिटेक्शंस हैज लेड टू द इंक्रीज इन द पेशेंट्स विद ग्रेट टू डिसेबिलिटीज एंड कोविड-19 हैव अ सीवियर इंपैक्ट इन द लेप्रोसी केस डिटेक्शंस बिकॉज़ द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ इंक्रीजिंग द ग्रेट टू डिसेबिलिटी व्हिच मे डिले द अटेनमेंट ऑफ द गोल जीरो लेप्रेसी तो इस तरह के कोशिशों की वजह से कोविड नाइन्टीन से इम्यूनिटी भी लोगों की काफी खराब हुई एंड इट हैज डेफिनेटली इम्पैक्टेड द पार्ट ऑफ द रिकवरी दैट इज देयर अ टोटल ऑफ 1863 ग्रेड टू डिसेबिलिटीज वर डिटेक्टेड अमंग द न्यू लेप्रेसी केसेस इन 2021 एंड 22 नाउ इन इंडिया स्पेसिफिकली व्हाट आर द डेटा सो एज पर द डेटा फ्रॉम द नेशनल लेप्रेसी इरेडिकेशन प्रोग्राम द स्टेट्स ऑफ बिहार महाराष्ट्र उत्तर प्रदेश उड़ीसा छत्तीसगढ़ मध्य प्रदेश West Bengal and Jharkhand contribute to around 76% of the new leprosy cases and as per the WHO 114451 leprosy cases has been detected in country which account for 80% of the cases in south asian country which is a huge number now india plan to export the solar power again something significant target by government of india according to the ministry of new and renewable energy India can produce annually solar module that can generate up to 100 gigawatt and become the net exporter of power. Now, India's solar targets. If we talk about it as a part of the climate pledge, India is targeting to install 175 gigawatt of the renewable energy capacity by 2022, and this include 100 gigawatt from solar, 60 gigawatt from wind energy, 10 gigawatts from bio powers, and 5 gigawatts from hydro power. Right. so but at present india has only installed 122 gigawatt against the target that was for 175 so this is the bifurcation of the target that has been achieved now for the solar that was 100 gigawatt and only 62 gigawatt has been installed now by 2026 india industry will able to manufacture the solar module and can generate 100 gigawatt of power that will help india to become a net exporter of solar power and this will significantly aid india's target to install 500 gigawatt of electricity capacity from the non fossil resources by 2030 now advantages kya hai solar panels ki definitely solar energy is a suitable alternative for the fuels and solar panel can be used as a massive save agar baat kare electricity ki even if see uh, there are solar batteries there are solar scoot the part of the Think that is there even electric scooter. I'm not talking about the solar one because we have not come with the solar scooter as such. But जितने भी solar related items हैं वो आपके electricity को काफी save करती हैं. 
using the plug and play model the solar power tariff is reduced by more than 75 percent now webinar on energy for sustainable growth so the prime minister has made an address uh, and this was an address on the post budget webinar by the prime minister and the theme the webinar was organized on energy for sustainable growth the prime minister has reiterated about the commitment that was made at glasgow during the cop 26 so cop 26 mein india ne net zero emissions ki baat kahi hai net zero emissions by 2070 and the vision of life for environment sustainability now pillars of green growth ki agar baat kare there are three important pillars that is increasing the productions for renewable energy reducing the use of fossil fuel in the economy and moving towards a gas based economy now government ki kya measures hai is regard mein government of india is definitely looking forward for the green growth and energy transition in this regard there are several measures some of them include ethanol blending jahan pe 20% ki target ki gayi thi we in we it is expected that will achieve it by 2025 the actual deadline was 2030 right pradhan mantri kisan urja suraksha ev mahabhiyan that is pm kusum it's a, uh, basically a scheme for solarizing the agriculture sector incentive for solar manufacturing rooftop solar scheme coal gasifications and battery storage so these are the government measures to ensure that we are moving towards green growth and energy transmissions right now green growth ki agar baat kare there is a seven priorities which i have told you which is there in the budget also to ye sare missions hain uh, agar baat kare green hydrogen missions ki energy storage project green credit program pm pranam misty that is for protecting the mangroves they can be a direct question in prelims examination wetland conservations and gobardhan for the biogas scheme now under the national green hydrogen mission india aims to produce 5 million ton of green hydrogen now gobardhan scheme is set to have like 500 new plants across the country now emissions trading scheme that is something important uh, for the prelims as well as for the mains the central government is working towards the final stage of notifying the emission trading scheme and the scheme will require the polluting industries to achieve certain standard of energy efficiency and permit them to trade with the improvement so december 2022 mein central government ne ek bill pass ki thi that was named as energy conservation amendment bill now about emission trading as a basic concept baat kare emission trading ki ye refer hoti hai as a cap and trade jise cat bhi kehte hain it is an approach that aims to reduce the pollutions using successful method where the environment and human health are also taken care of an mnc trading program is that has two component first is to limit limit on the pollutions and even tradable allowances equal to the limit of authorized allowances to emit specific amount so ek specific targets di jati hain jo ki usually 1 ton of pollutants jo hai unke hisab se and credit system di jati hai that is actually helping so in india we have delhi metro that is provided with the carbon credit also in the trading part sectors that will be covered notified uh, will be specified for the sectors some important sectors include aluminum cement fertilizers and even uh, to a larger extent there will be companies that will be exceeded with the target of credit certifications that could bank or sell if they fail to meet the target right so certificates that could uh, you know sell to the companies if they fail to meet the target will be an options that will be given emission trading schemes ki agar baat kare it is called the deployed in european union and korean countries so is tarah ke scheme already dusre country mein operate kar rahe hain this is not new to india now nodal body again important for prelims examination in the nodal body Uh, BEE that is the Bureau of Energy Efficiency will be taking care of, which is uh, working under the Ministry of Power, and B is running with the Performance Achievement Rate known as PAT. There is a question in UPSC prelims in 2015, uh, I guess 15 or 16 to check it out. So there was a question that called for that 1078 industries will be the part of the 13 sectors with the security certificates if they exceed the certain target. Now India's first trading programs ki agar baat kare Gujarat has become world first market to have a uh, particulate matter emissions with 155 industrial unit as surat for the live trading and the emissions trading scheme and the program is a market based where 
the government set up cap on emissions and allow industries to buy and sell below the cap. Now some news that is brief in nature and more relevant for your prelims examination. Yuva Sangam portal. This is a portal which was launched with aims to build empathy between the youth and northeastern state uh, and other states. It is an initiative to build close ties between the youth of Northeast region and rest of the India under the spirit of Ek Bharat Sreist Bharat. So this is exposure to visit youth in various states of India. Now, Second India Rice Congress, which was inaugurated by President of India at ICR National Research Center Institute at Qatar. The president noted that the rice is a cornerstone for food security in India and as a key factor for India economy. And the president has also praised the effort that was made by the ICAR NRI in the development of India's first high protein rice that is CR Dhan 10, 3 10. This is important. There can be a direct question with the CR Dhan 10, right? So, you can it. And also, it has released hygiene variety called CR Dhan 350. Adi Mahotsav, which was recently inaugurated by the Prime Minister, it's a festival which called for the uh, forecasting the traditional value and knowledge base of the national tribal people. So this is a national tribal festival which was organized at Major Dhyan Chand Stadium in Delhi. And this is an attempt to showcase the culture of the tribal people, their spirits, the cuisine, their commerce and the art Christian uh, skills that is there. This is organized by the TriFit, that is Tribal Cooperation Farm. Marketing Development Federations Limited and the Prime Minister has emphasized that uh, we should have a pride on the tribal people uh, USPs because they are moving, they are working, they are helping also to move towards the sustainability development and said tribal glory that is actually helping uh, with a part of the development, right? moving to an unprecedented pride for the country. And he emphasized that the tribal community has also a lot to inspire with regards to the sustainable development because everything which is done for the productions and the part is an organic and does not involve for any kind of pollutions. Now a small satellite launch vehicle, something important for science and tech portions in the prelims examination. So ISRO has launched small satellite in a second attempt or almost a 450 circular orbit 15 minutes may complete. We have three satellites. Thay. First is ISRO EOS 07. Second was US based firm Antrix uh, that is Janus 1 and Chennai based spacecraft that is Space Kids Azadi Sat 2. Right? It provides low cost space offering low return around the flexibility accommodating multiple satellites and demand for the infrastructure development. Right? Demand for minimal uh, launch infrastructure part. So it configure three propulsion and velocity terminal module also. So this is an image of how it can help India in improving the part of the launch system. Now Khanan Prahari mobile app, this is something important to uh, help the people in terms of providing the knowledge about the coal mine surveillance management system or jo illegal mining hai usko curb karne ke liye, usme transparency lane ke liye, is tarah ki koshish ki gai hai using the space technology and it will call for the detections of the fraud that is taking place in terms of illegal mining. Through the mobile app Khanem Perry, anyone can monitor it and the illegal coal mining activities will be curbed out. So this is a measure wherein the individual can raise a complaint also. He can track the status and even the mine, uh, you know, it can have a geotagging also for the location he is complaining. So this is something very important to ensure the surveillance of the coal mines. Now GSMA Government Leadership Award, India has received GSMA Government Leadership Award at the Mobile Congress in Barcelona, Spain and GSMA is associated to bring mobile operator and the key stakeholders into global mobile industries and which represent 750 mobile operators, 400 companies and telecom ecosystem recognizing one of the uh, countries every year. So this can be a relevant question for many other government examination and specifically going to be relevant for the UPSC prelims as well. And moving to the next segment that is bilateral agreement and summit. So first is India and Italy to enhance the defense pact. India and Italy will definitely look forward 
to increase their bilateral defense operations. And this is likely to be announced during the Italian Prime Minister who is visiting India. And Prime Minister will visit to India as a chief guest of Raisena Tilo Conference. Indo-Pacific strategy is very important when we are talking about India and Italy. So the Prime Minister will be like the third Italian Prime Minister to visit India in the past decade. Both countries will prioritize the efforts towards Indo-Pacific strategy and defense agreements. India, Japan and Italy has jointly launched a trilateral towards working for secure, stable and Indo-Pacific region. And India and Italy has also engaged in multiflora in the Indian Ocean region and Indo-Pacific region. India and South Africa cooperation in disability sector. So both country is looking forward to enhance the part of disability sectors and cooperation in that. An MOU has been signed in this regard. So MOU between India and South Africa. This can be a possible question for many other government examination. And this was there by the Department of Empowerment and Personal Disabilities Government of India. Uh, with the South government of uh, basically the government of South Africa ki with their joint initiative on the disability sectors. And MOU will benefit the person with disability, specifically in both countries, especially that require modern, scientific, durable and cost effective assertive device that will benefit from the MOU. So all people will be given the treatment, even the specific sectors, if you see the disability sector, which has not been given focus now will be uh, helping each one by one. Now, the India's technical and economic cooperation program has been useful medium for promoting the cooperations and development of human resources. Now, India strengthening bilateral relationship with Qatar. Again, this is something marking 50 year of basically bilateral relationship between India and Qatar. This is, can be a possible question in prelims examination specifically for those who are having PSIR as an option. The diplomatic relations ki pe India or Qatar ne 50 years established. Ki hai. And this is a historical ties between the countries where both countries are looking forward for the shipping and water discussions and improving the part of other sectors when include LNG, LPG, petrochemicals, plastic, aluminiums and even items like uh, cereals, Coppers, iron, steel, vegetable, spices, and other produced product, plastic products, being constructions, material, all these items are mentioned over here. Now, some military exercises and initiatives. Among them, the first is Exercise Cobra Warrior. This was there by Indian Air Force consignment, which is there with 145 Air Warrior. This was there with the help of the United Kingdom. So India or UK ke beech mein ka direct countries pucha jai, then you can answer that India and UK is the country, right? So this exercise Cobra Warrior is a multilateral exercise from country like Finland, Sweden, South Africa, United States of America and Singapore being the participant country. The exercise uh, aims to participate the fighter aircraft engagement, learn from the best practices of various air forces. Operation Sadbhavna, this is between, in uh, this was actually there in the state of the Union Territory of Ladakh and the activity aims at improving the remote area of Ladakh area. This is a part of the initiative that is taken by the government of India and the women in remote area will be empowered through the training program and vocational learning. Wahan vocational learning centers banai jayenge, women empowerment centers will be there, computer centers in the location in Ladakh. And some of the objective achieved through the Operation Sabhavna is the National Integrations Tool, Women Empowerment, Employment Generations, Education and Nation Building Developmental Process. Now, X Dharma Gajan, this is between India and Japan and the annual training which took place. The scope of the exercise has a plateau level training and operations in the jungle and semi-urban terrains. The exercise found primarily high degree physical fitness sharing drills at the tactic level. So this was conducted at the Camp Ingua in Singa province in Japan. Operation Dost, I think most of you must be aware of this operation which was launched to aid uh, in search and rescue operation in Turkey and Syria. There was a earthquake, a deadly earthquake which has halted the life there. 
and almost claimed 46,000 lives. So the army field hospital street close to 3,600 earthquake victims in Hataya province. And the disease, uh, basically disaster relief team care that comprises of 99 personnel of Indian Armed Field Hospital and NDRF ki team ko pe deploy ki gai and a successful operation was there. Even the government of Turkey and Syria has appreciated India's effort and thanks India for their contribution. So these were all important news for the month of February in the PIB compilation. We have other initiatives for you like daily news and editorial analysis which I cover from the Hindu and Indian Express to give you a complete analysis. The editorial part is also discussed. So this will give you a strong foundation for current affairs. Do watch this on a daily basis. We have an IS Gazette magazine on website. PIB compilations all over there. MPR, the PRS ki ek initiative hai. Even the, it is released by PRS. So we have discussed that also. The gist of Yojana Kurushetra is already uploaded uh, for this month. So do check it out. All this initiative will help you to sail through the journey of civil services. If you have any other concern, you can reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to assist you. For time being, I'm signing off. Thank you so much for watching this video.